G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with round 2 of the FIA Manufacturer Series for 2021. If we have a look at some of the names in the lobby here, give yourself a shout out in the comments if you see your name, but some familiar ones there in Norm, El Rico, uh, Old Mate, Iron Mask, Aussie Hypnotic and Sharky I've seen before and Fat Shady I've seen before but I've not really come across him in a race yet. But here we go, round number two. It's a group four race this time. You might see the R4M liveried Toyota GT86 there in the background. And uh, shortly we will see, we're at Maggiore West. So the west side of the Maggiore GP circuit. If we have a look, we go out for qualifying here. So we are ranked number three in this lobby. We've got the third highest DR in this group of drivers. It's probably fourth fourth split, I would imagine. We have a lot more drivers um, in the FIA manufacturers now that we're combined with Japan. So the qualifying session here, you can see everyone backs up a bit trying to get a slipstream. And the thing about this qualifying session is you can get two qualifying runs in, so you can cancel back to the pits and go for another outlap. Um, but it's very marginal and you can't waste time and dilly dally like that. So I dropped the gear and bolted and this car goes very slow and I'm like, I'm not waiting behind you because I could miss out on my second lap. But we're going to go for this qualifying, get a banker in and then hopefully for our second run we can get lucky enough to grab a slipstream and hopefully improve our time further. We're going to go for this banker. So track guide, looking on the left, there's the last blue van. That was my braking point. Third gear and then into second you can choose second or third and then for turn two here actually chose first that particular time there and then turn three just as the curb starts on the right just lift off the throttle and turn in no brakes required and not even a full lift of the throttle required turn four is basically nothing turn five smash that curb turn six smash that curb and then out onto the back straight very long back straights it's going to be a slipstream fest coming down towards the big banky boy uh, which is traditionally turn 11 but with this shorter laid out it's turn 7 so braking just sort of in between the electronic flag marker and the 50 meter board for banky boy i decided to keep it in third to try and keep my rolling momentum up and i think that worked out okay heading up the hill turn eight is easy flat turn nine is easy flat of course but just take advantage of track limits you can get two wheels on the grass coming up towards turn 10 looking on the left hand side braking just before the 50 meter board down into fourth and a late downshift into third just to get it rotated on the curb power out to the apex and just doesn't that curb ends on the left just lift off again and try and meet that curb on the inside. We actually ran slightly wide, so uh, not the most ideal lap. They're coming into the final corner just before the 50 meter board down, uh, downshift into fourth, burst of braking and get all over that curb on the inside. You can get onto the power very early in the Toyota GT86, especially on low fuel. We come across the line to 128.1. You can see immediately, the second I cross the line, I pause and cancel back to the pits because I know it's marginal. We've got one minute and 30 seconds remaining and that is very, very, very tight in terms of a lap. So tight, in fact, that, uh, yeah, we actually miss it. So what, what's this, maybe six seconds, six or seven seconds too short? Yeah, not great. So we missed our second qualifying run, but we are currently in second with a good group of people yet to finish. That's actually where we stayed, in second. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Not a bad qualifying position, I suppose. We were, I ranked three, so I did expect to be up the front, but a second is quite good. We'll take it. But as always, for now, let's enjoy the manufacturer's introduction. Lovely as always, we meet ourselves on the grid. Look at me there in second, turning the wheel, flashing the lights, got the wipers on, hazards on, really celebrating the fact, saying really, look at me with my R4M plus across my bonnet. But 
let's just settle down and get into the race. So behind El Rico, El Rico is very quick. He's definitely quite a significant chunk faster than me. So I don't really expect to be able to get Paul. Uh, I don't really expect to be able to get the win here. But we'll just try and stick as close to him as possible. Toyota GT86 is very poor in a straight line. It hasn't got much power. It's okay in slip, but um, it's not really that great here. Now this track, I reckon in time trial, it probably leads leans a bit more towards handling. But in the race, you need the power to get moves done. So it's kind of difficult given the GT86 here. Now, the car behind, Takachan, he goes for the move here. I wanted him to bump me because I was only about 1.3 seconds behind Rico. I figured if you can bump me down the straights, I'll pull you through the corners with my handling. You can probably catch up to Rico, but no, he goes for the move. And this is really, this is really the topic of today's video. This race here is a no-stop. There's no strategy and we're on hard tyres, fuel. Th my car can make it to the end, but some cars can't and then tyre wear is hardly an issue. We actually make this mistake here, which is not good, running very wide at the final corner, bumping the barrier there. We've got quite a gap behind it that just puts me out of the slipstream of Takacha. Not good. But what I was saying before, this race, because there's no strategy, everyone is basically in a slipstream train until the final laps where you make your moves. So, working together is the key. If there was one key for this race, there was one main objective is work bloody together for this race and yeah look we'll see how that goes down now Rico ahead actually crashes <laughs> out of the lead so that's no good for him but that just promotes Takachan up into the lead with no one in his slipstream promotes Rico back down the field so that could be potentially a position gain in the long run and because we crash at the exit of the final corner we've got this Ferrari who went for a move up the inside instead of bump drafting we managed to get a cut back on him at turn 7, which is Banky Boy this time. So turn 7 is Banky Boy, not, it's usually turn 11, but it's turn 7 now. And we're running side by side up through this S's, that's not too much of an issue because they're easily flat and he's just got the left hand side, but he switches to the inside last second, very late dive, it just pushes me wide and I lose a further position to this Shin Lamborghini guy and that is pivotal for this race and we'll see how that develops between myself and Shin. He flashes the hazards, the Ferrari flashes the hazards. I'm like, no, you can't just flash the hazards and say, oh, I'm sorry for smashing you off the track. It, no, you have to redress that. You know, I think flashing the hazards is more to say thank you. I would typically flash the hazards to say thank you. Um, you can't just lunge someone, smash them off, make them lose two positions and then just flash your hazards and go, oh, sorry, and continue on bit frustrating and I was very frustrated at that point but he eventually does sort of back out as I go for the move at turn one because I was not having that and I did not want another two cars in front of me as it almost was the case because I really want to work up towards that first position which is now inhabited by that Corvette but we skip ahead we stayed in the slipstream of this Lamborghini for a while up until lap six where Rico is actually fought back through the pack and is now back in my slipstream so at this point here i knew rico is faster than me there is zero point holding him up there's no way i'm going to be able to hold him off for the remainder of the race which is most of it <laughs> at this point so coming up onto the back straight this time he's in that um, bmw m4 it's got seven gears much better high speed than me much better top speed than me rather so i just figure i'm gonna i want to lose no time so i'm gonna let you pass here and I'm going to grab your slipstream and hopefully we can dispatch Shin as quickly as possible and as a pair work our way back up towards Takachan in the lead. That was my plan for this race. He flashes the hazards for a long time. That's saying thank you. All good, mate. I'm looking at the long term for this race. I really want to be in the fight for first because I know he can do it. I was faster than the Corvette in qualifying, so in theory I should be faster than him in the race. And if I have the slipstream off the back of Rico, that should carry my GT86 down the back straight. Because he is naturally faster than me, I shouldn't catch up to him in the corners. That is the end goal. That's the end game. So, really here, my view is I want to fight for first. That's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to try and do. But there is an imposter among us. <laughs> There is Shin in second, who I haven't really raced that much, or at all. I don't think I've raced him at all. And I can tell by the way he's driving, he's quite defensive. 
defensive when he needs to be defensive and offensive when he needs to be offensive and that of course means wanting to go for moves not as in insulting people but coming out onto the back straight the BMW M4 now has the slip off the back of Shin and that is not good because if I'm following a car that doesn't have slip I can just about keep up with them in a straight line but as soon as that car ahead has slip as well they just drive away from me and you can see they've broken the slipstream and this is where we see Rico goes for the move at the big banky boy which I think is appropriate because he is quite clearly faster being the pole sitter dispatches that Lamborghini puts him between myself and Rico and I now have the slipstream off the back of Shin now and this is where my race begins to go downhill because I've now got a car in between myself and Rico which is not what I want. I want to be behind Rico. So now I'm stuck behind this Lamborghini, which I don't want to be. And he is just holding me up at this point. So Lamborghini, four wheel drive car. It's good in a straight line, but it understeers a lot in the corners. So my GT86 is gonna be faster in the corners than the Lamborghini Huracan is. Huracan, if I'm pronouncing that cor correctly. So what I want is to be ahead of the Lamborghini so it can get all the advantage from me in the corners and I can get the advantage of it when it bump drops me. That will probably keep us quite close to Rico. But we'll see how that works out for us as we're heading into lap 8 at this point here. So you can have a look at my tyre wear now. Um, lap 8, so we're heading towards halfway. Just before halfway, the end of the next lap will be halfway. But you can see my tyre wear is just little slivers of red on each tyre. So there's really nothing to worry about. I think I was running uh, zero brake balance eventually. I think I did start on plus one, which I did in practice races, but uh, I eventually changed it to zero because the tyre wear is not that bad. Now we're back in the same situation. The Lamborghini also has seven gears, so the fact that it ha now had a slipstream off the back of Rico just meant I was not able to keep up, but he was holed up behind him. Through the big banky boy, I managed to just crawl myself back into slipstream but back up this hill because this is all flat out you can get a slipstream advantage rather than a dirty air disadvantage and he actually goes for the move Shin goes for the move at turn 10 that is yeah look I don't think that is very smart because they're running side by side through these next couple of corners here of turns 11 and turn 12 or turn 12 they finally redressed and sorted it out well, you can see they've lost even more time off the leader, so I bet Takachan at this point is looking behind, is absolutely licking his lips at the prospect of having a race victory here at Maggiore West. But at least I've now got the slipstream back off Rico. He's looking offensive down into turn one. He goes for the dive down the inside of turn one. He gets it done through minimal time loss, and I want to get past the Lamborghini, and he actually makes a little bit of contact with the BMW. Um, I'm gonna take full advantage of that because I was not involved. I'm going to take full advantage of that little bit of contact there. And I've now got the slipstream of Rico in front of the Lamborghini. I'm finally where I want to be. And I've got half the race to go. I'm three seconds off the lead. So I know that if I can stay with Rico, I can probably get back up to the lead. Now the fact that I have the slipstream, the Lamborghini, when he pulls out, he doesn't have the slipstream and can't get the move done. So now the goal is stay behind Rico. Do not lose slip for the love of everything that is holy, do not lose the slip off the back of Rico. That is that is the key to my race now. This is the number one objective at this point. And hopefully we can actually just race calmly enough to not lose the slip. Now, Shin is very close behind and I can tell from the way he's been driving, he's very, very offensive he really wants to go for moves so I was a little bit worried by move but eventually we pulled away and I went a little bit wide now at the final corner and that's just put me out of slip man oh man so I now have to get a good turn one and two to crawl myself back into the slip of that BMW and that back straight will give me an opportunity to catch back up but coming through turn two if you have a look at the time gap between myself and Rico it's maybe half a car width too wide off the apex of turn two we get a nice turn three there actually onto the power nicely but coming down the hill I've just lost the slip of Rico and that that has really put me on the back foot here because I'm not fast enough to catch Rico on my own and this Lamborghini now can, is able to go for the move on me. As soon as I lost the slipstream I lost just enough speed in a straight line for that Lamborghini to get past so he's now passed, and he has the speed in the straight line, so he could potentially catch Rico, but 
Uh, we've seen, obviously, Rico having started on pole position. He's probably the fastest out of the group of cars in this race here. In fact, he does hold the fastest lap of 128.4 at the moment. I've set myself a couple of 128s in this race here. 128.6 uh, and lap 5 was actually the fastest lap at the time, having been highlighted in purple on my totem on the right-hand side of your screen. But coming through the final corner, you can see the advantage that Toyota has. So Lamborghini, probably advantage. Lamborghini from turn 3 up to turn 10, and then from turn 10 to turn 2 is probably advantage to Ch Toyota GT86. So this is what I mean. If I could just get the straight line advantage down the straight that the Lamborghini has as I go for the cutback here, so you can see he ran slightly wide and I've just given him just enough space. He's pushed me onto the sausage on the apex of turn three, but I managed to get that move done. So I'm up into third, and I think it was this point here I've decided, you know what, this Lamborghini does not want to play smart. I might as well not waste my time and just be frustrated by it. I might as well fight for third because I've got myself a podium in the previous manufacturer's race. I've got myself a podium in the uh, Toyota GR GT Cup at Laguna Seca. Can I get three podiums in a row in the championships this year? That'd be all right. So I'm going to go for third because Rico's going to catch Takachan. There's going to be no way I can catch up to him. It's basically third. Can I just hold off Shin just long enough to get third? And I've got however many laps to go. That is about six laps to go. So let's have a go at it. He's got two main opportunities to overtake me into turn seven and into turn 10. They're his two overtaking opportunities. As long as I'm ahead from turn 10 up to turn uh, 13, I can hold my position up to turn one. So I'm not too concerned about an overtake down the main straight, but we'll see how that works out for us. And I have quite a significant advantage through that final turn, so it's just not uh, the Lamborghini is not able to get quite close enough through turn uh, through turn one to get a move done. But we fast forward to the back straight of lap 13. I go slightly defensive here, so I've decided definitely at this point, yeah, I'm going for third. You want to fight me for third instead of working my way, working our way up towards first? No worries, I'll play ball with that. But eventually it just became a bit of deja vu. It was basically, I was running the same lap over and over, and at the exit of turn three here, I was about six tenths behind, and that was not close enough for the Lamborghini to go for the move, so I don't have to go defensive. He's got another opportunity here, but on the exit of this corner, I have the advantage. I had the better run, and he's about four tenths behind. It was not close enough to go for a move into turn 10. So t uh, lap 15 now, on the exit of turn three, I've got a six tenths gap again. I've got a little bit of a poor exit, uh, from turn three. So the Lamborghini just pulls a little bit closer than he did previously with the six tenth gap on the exit of turn three. He's got another opportunity, of course, up into turn 10. So I'm going to fast forward this one. It's less than a four tenth gap, so that just puts me on edge in terms of a move, but he's not able to get that done. I park it on the apex and I have the advantage from then on up until this point of lap 16. The exit of turn three, he's got a four tenth gap this time with all of this back straight to do. So that's a bit concerning at this point. So I'm running defensive because I know he can get this move done. I run all the way over to the right. There is no way he's having the inside for this, but he actually gives me a bump. I'm like, no worries, straight back to the racing line. Thank you. As soon as he gives me a bump, he's not able to get past. So thank you very much for that. Back to the racing line and I take a nice line through turn seven. He's got another opportunity up into turn 10, but I give him the left hand side, the outside for turn 10. You can see he breaks slightly early and wants to go for the cutback, but I just have the grip on the apex to just fight that attempted to move off. So coming through here, see we've got a bit of a gap. Skip ahead to lap 17, turn three, and you can see he's got a about a seventh tenth gap this time. Fast forward down the back straight, and the gap is less than three tenths, but it's not close enough to go for a move. And once again, there's another opportunity, but that gap that time is up towards half a second. There's no way he could have got for a move up into turn 10 on lap 17. But again, we skip ahead to the final lap. Quick note, Rico has made himself up into the lead. Congratulations to him, having crashed and got back up into the lead. But now is the last chance I have to defend my position. So I go defensive anyway. Uh, he was close enough to go for that move that time on the very right-hand side. No way he's going up the inside. I give him the outside for the hairpin. I know I can keep my line on the outside, but I just run a little bit too narrow. I'm over the sausage curbs on the inside. It just inhibits my run through there a little bit too much. And he's very close, coming up towards the uphill S's 
It's through turn 8. He gets clean up the inside. I gave him the inside for turn 8 to hopefully eventually get the outside for turn 10. But he's just got that overtake done. So I just got absolutely shown up there. And it's going to be very difficult to get this position back before the finish line. The only opportunity I've got is the final corner where I have quite a large advantage against this Lamborghini. But if he defends, there's nothing much I can do. So I'd go for the nice apex four wheels on the curb and I almost get that overlap but he's just coming across he was just about ahead at that point so I, I would say fair enough but that was it having defended for like what what was that six seven eight laps he caught me on the last lap for third oh man so I ended up in fourth I should have been third man I the third position was mine but we come home in fourth, and we'll see how many points we get for that one. Uh, 234. So, look, I'm gonna, I kept that one. I didn't go again. I probably could have gone again, but I didn't want to risk losing 234 points uh, for that. Because, because it could become quite crucial for my campaign later in the season. If I have enough bad results, eventually my 234 will count towards the final points. And I wanted to keep that, but man, quite a frustrating race that one actually. I definitely feel like if people played it a bit differently, we could have been up in the lead. There's no way I could have gotten up into the lead on my own. I needed someone to work with me, and unfortunately, I was just stuck on the track with Shin. So I definitely felt I was faster then, but he was. Uh, the slipstream is just strong enough to allow a slightly slower car to keep pace with you, even if on time trial pace they're slower than you. So there's a little bit of a frustrating point with this game, a little, bit of a little bit of a quirk, but at the end of the day it was actually a decent race and I felt as though I defended quite well up until the final lap where uh, Shin just poked a hole in my defence. But that's going to finish up this one today. Do hit that like button if you enjoyed. Do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, constructive criticism as always. Very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today. And that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.